Hello there, everybody. My name is Stream Elixir, and welcome to our podcast. I have two wonderful gentlemen with me here today. Uh, Maru, you can go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, hello, I'm Mimaru. I'm also known as Novika. Um, I'm a, an artist. I uh, used to do YouTube and stuff, and now I'm just dedicated to art and um, gaming. Yeah, my name is Mudahar. You may know me as some ordinary gamers. I'm totally into finance, totally into cryptocurrency. I love NFTs. Oh, Let me tell yeah. you right now, I'm minting like yeah. four projects right now. I already got like <laughs> I already got Cumcoin on the way. So if you guys want to get it on the early floor, it can 1800x. Real hey man, I, I I already got the I already got the uh, pre the pre sale on Cumcoin, man. All right, they were going to oh, run that so hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, the rock pool is gonna be insane. You don't even know. <laughs> like I said, I am Extreme Elixir. I primarily just do streaming over on Twitch TV. These are my buddies. This is going to be a podcast about gaming, about media, about uh, movies. Uh, most likely found footage movies, if any of you are into that. Uh, but that being said, today's episode is about a game that just recently released, known as Persona 3. Um, it is not something that I personally have played, but these two fine gentlemen have apparently been pouring their lives into it, and they have some strong opinions regarding uh, the remake. Dude, yeah, not only you played... Twice. Not only you play it, but it's also like it was such a battle to get you to play five like years ago. <laughs> like insane. Okay, to we, be fair, to be fair, I think I, I finished what five about a year ago, finally. Yeah, after like five years after we released, dude. We we have to bully your ass into playing that game. I mean, okay, I'll I'll fully admit it was a fantastic game. And I do regret not finishing it with you guys. That being said. No, no, no. Eh. You still didn't finish it with us. Yeah. Cause, yeah, that's cause true. Let me tell you something right now. I finished original Persona Five, motherfucker. <laughs> you played it like a year after Royale came out, dude. Cause like, me, who's that? <laughs> okay, to be to be totally fair, the only version of it that I have beaten is Persona Five Royal, or Royale, or whatever How you want to call it. How many times did you buy Persona Five? I'm just, just want to. Yeah, don't you have like the steel books as well? Like, steel book as well? Dude, I got both the steel books and the Steam edition. I don't, even, I don't even feel guilty for like Persona Five Remake. Like I literally, like as we started the show, I just got the Amazon like thing. It's like your pro your package is being delivered next week. Like I literally thought I canceled it, but I didn't. So like now I have the PS Five physical for the game coming in. Okay, that's well, actually kind of cool though. I just wish it was a steel book because I, I wish I, I could have collected the steel book. I don't mind it. It's like Yakuza, you know. It's you know, always funny something, and, something cool to have, like a, at least a physical version of it. Yeah. Everything is going. Funny enough, I went into GameStop this past week because uh, I was really interested in getting the Persona Three uh, remake steel book. Turns out they never made. They didn't make a steel book for this one. They didn't apparently. make one for the new Yakuza either, which kind of fucking sucked because yeah, i remember when weird. yakuza dropped like the last game seven like a dragon that had a steel book with it and you don't even get one with eight which somehow that's like the bigger game and they're more known and it's so weird and it got nothing and yakuza yakuza and persona are known for having incredibly beautiful steel books i've got uh yakuza kiwami and a few other ones over there some of my favorite steel books i own the persona 5 uh and persona 5 royale Two of my favorite steel books that I own. How the fuck do you have like two? You have the steel book. For <laughs> this five. guy has like, two he games. He fucking played the game. Yeah. And he has the Royale, funniest he part. Plays it. The funniest part <laughs> is that <laughs> me and Mura, me, Mura and me, we were we were fans of Persona for like before oh, five God. release. We were waiting Persona five when the first uh, teaser dropped, and it was like, oh, oh, you you want you're a slave, you want emancipation. That was what we knew. We were like. In, uh, we liked Persona before it was cool, if you want to say it like that. I When Persona 5 released, I couldn't buy it because I was really poor at that time. I, I was just moved into college. I had no money. And I say, okay, I'm going to buy it when I have some money. Four years later, I can finally buy it. And this motherfucker had it for like three years at that point. Never played it. And then I went and beat the game before you even touched it, you asshole. I, I know. I That's one of my favorite things ever about Persona 5 is the fact that you waited four years to play the damn game, and finally, you finally get to play it, you beat it, and then about a year after that is when I finally started playing it and getting into it again. 
fucking insane, insane. And speaking of insane, can I just say how, as someone who played Persona 3 and 4, like back in 2008, 2009, when it was still pretty niche, it was not like a franchise that was like, it's not like today, you don't have the memes, you don't have the video edits, you don't have the anime, the movies, the, yeah. the fucking dancing on Moonlight or whatever. Seeing a yeah, remake of a so. game that I, <laughs> shut up, <laughs> seeing a, a remake of a game that I, I, I fucking love that game back then. Being in the mainstream like that, it's 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 great. I it, fucking hate beautiful. it, bro. I hate I hate how normies are playing my fucking game now. <laughs> yeah, oh, look at the game. Okay, okay, here, okay but go but play you your actually... fucking FIFA and shit, Lucy. <laughs> like, I don't want you to fucking... Okay, but do you do you hate the fact that the new the Persona Three remake, all the accessibility settings that it has, that essentially makes it it's not the same in terms of difficulty okay, as the right. original. I'm, I'm just gonna right. say it like it is. I love the fucking accessibility settings. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, I love the game, but the original, those first, like, to get to level 10, man, you got to get used to fights with enemies just giving you, like, two or three experience. That Bro, is I'd fucking rather bullshit. Fuck a pencil sharpener before I fucking play the first <laughs> You know, actually, like, I was talking about, like, man, I don't really want to replay Persona 3 original, but the only reason I did it was, like, every time I fired it up, I'm like, fuck, man, the first 15 levels of Tartarus, so... So to give the audience context on what Persona 3 is, each Persona game is kind of different in like its themes and also its gameplay. So Persona 1 and 2 and the original PlayStation, they were not like the Personas we know. They didn't have the social linking. They didn't have the fucking, you know, we date characters or we have a social life outside. It was very much an RPG game where like you jumped into environments and like you went through traditional dungeons. And it was like basically a Shin Megami Tensei game with like this high school... Uh, you know, fix attached to it. Very dark, very good game. Persona yeah. 3 is the first time where the franchise introduced, like, social linking and, like, you know, you had this day-to-day -day mechanic where, yeah, you had a dungeon crawler, but you also were, like, making friends, and then as you made friends in Persona, you increase your social links. So, the, typically, the game has, like, 15 social links, and you can rank them up from 0 to 10, and the reason you do social links is the higher your social rank is for each and every different, like, arcana, like, or tree, you can fuse personas, which is a very integral part of, like, Shin Megami games, like, fusing yep. personas together. Oh, yeah. So, when you fuse in persona, depending on the rank, you get extra experience points, so all of these things fuse together to create the game that we all know and love. 3 started that social linking like day-to-day -day. you got a year like high school life persona 4 carried it beyond and then five is you know the fucking mega like monolith that it is today so with persona 3 it was the first time jumping in and when it's the first time you introduce something to a franchise that is the f fucking hardest shit to get in it like it's great when it came out like i like oh, yeah, it when yeah. it came out but going back to it now Fuck me. It's pretty rough. Shit like the the exhaust mechanic, like you can you have this giant dungeon that you can explore every night. But if your characters get tired, you they're gonna like perform worse. They're gonna get knocked down easier. They're gonna die easier. So you gotta like balance that uh, at the same time. And like going back to that, that was kind of shit. Like, but right now, when you look at with the with the eyes of someone who plays games right now, that was kind of shit. That kind of limits your progress a little bit. I was going to say, I so I, to be totally clear for everybody out there, I have not played, I've only played Persona 5. I haven't played 3 or the 3 remake. That being said, one of the biggest four. complaints I heard regarding the original was the exhaust mechanic because it essentially acted as kind of like a, a gatekeeper for any kind of grinding you wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And, um, well, yeah, because your characters are fucking brain dead. They couldn't bring a Red Bull with them. You walk well, well, into uh, six battles um, and it's like, bitch, go home. Um, actually, it tells you that in Tartarus, your character gets exhausted easier, right? That, that's that's the lore reason. I man. fucking hate that shit so much. Like, it's <laughs> such a bullshit fucking reason. And so the only reason they did that was because, like, if you play Persona, like, if you know how to play Persona, Shin Megami games, the battle system is probably the best like battle system I've ever had in like any JRPG. So how it works mm. is um, if you play something like Pokemon, you have uh, weaknesses and strengths, right? 
Yep. So oh, yeah. the same concept applies in Persona or Shin Megami games, Mega Ten games, we call them, where like every single like monster you fight has like affinities. So there's like seven, and they have a weakness. So if you exploit a weakness, you get an extra turn on your character, and then you can pass the turn around with other characters and exploit weaknesses until you can do an all-out attack. And like you can turn mm -hmm. what could be like a standard boring turn-based fight into something exciting if you know how to quickly like you can like there are battles in persona that last like 10 seconds at best if you're good oh my at God, yeah and it's very and much other, about yeah. keeping your brain engaged and actually thinking about what you're doing before you yeah. actually do and it. like the other side of the spectrum there are fights that could go on for like 20 minutes 25 minutes there, there are some like big enemies in here I, I don't think i've ever beaten like the elizabeth fight for example you gotta you gotta know everything at that point and i, I was never that well to be fair to like uh in persona 5 and i would say Persona 5 is probably the most accessible one out of all of them. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Um, in my personal opinion, uh, the very first, your very first chapter fight in that one with, um, mm -hmm. what's his name, Kamashita, I think it yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's, that's very much, that, that battle when I started was very much a learning curve battle. <laughs> where I didn't quite under I thought I understood the mechanics that were given to me. Well, they could have but seen I didn't. That part. <laughs> and it I shit you not, it would take me like 10 to 20 minutes to beat him. How the fuck does it take you 10 minutes to beat Kamoshida dude? <laughs> I'm I'm not kidding you. I eventually beat him, but it wasn't until like my second or third time playing through that first chapter yeah. that all of a sudden it was like, "Oh, okay, I get this now." I need to chain all this stuff together. But dude, once you figure that system out, it's like... Oh, it's so nice. It's so it's easy. easier, yeah, yeah. That being... The one thing that uh, you <laughs> keep comparing it to Shimagami Tensei, uh, what people will find if they haven't played either game is that the characters, uh, specifically the personas from uh, Shin Megami and uh, Persona tend to overlap. Yep. You're going you're gonna to oh. see uh, Jack Frost in both of them, stuff like that. Uh, that being said, do not get them mistaken. Shin Megami Tensei is ball bustingly hard. <laughs> I I it, couldn't I couldn't really tell. I that's it I is played horrifically all the games, difficult. Yeah. I mean, I'm just I have good not at played video Shin Megami, games, so it's not really that fucking difficult. Oh, you really shut up! Video game. Shut up, dude! <laughs> fucking make me go play Demi Kids like a fucking dumbass. <laughs> that <laughs> game was fucking good. You didn't get far in it for the fucking story to start, dude. Oh, yeah, the fuck. story is that, yeah, no, man, I, I'm okay. I don't feel like playing a fucking RPG like that dude. on GBA right now. Oh, yeah, but you played Damn Golden Kids. Sun. Fuck you. Golden Sun is awesome. I don't want to hear it. Oh, that is so fucking... Demi oh, Kids, you know. light and dark change people's Demi lives. I, I have never, never heard of Demi Kids, dude. I don't know what the fuck you're talking I about. I, I, legit, I don't even know what you're talking the about. Only, What's the, okay, Demi Kids? It's the game we played last night, like, when he was, like, loading up random ROMs. So, yeah. the only reason I know about that game, and this is the only reason, is, like, back in the day, <laughs> in primary school, not primary, but, like, elementary school, so this was around the fifth grade, there was this one Iranian kid who would just, like... He was a kid that always like downloaded ROMs and shit, and he thought he was like a hacker because he could download a Game Boy ROM. So he's like, not I would wrong just, though. I, yeah, I mean literally, I would go to his house and like he would just load up the stupidest fucking games imaginable. <laughs> like, you ever asked me like how the fuck I know about a certain video game that's super obscure? That is how I know. <laughs> so I go to his house and like he loads up Demi Kids, and by the way, this this is the first time I've ever seen a Shin Megami Tensei game. I didn't know it was an SMT game at the time. Oh my I just, god! Like so when so remember when Persona Three, I got my hands on it and I'm like, whoa, this game! Like I had a deja vu moment. I'm like, wait, if you use Personas, what the fuck? Demi Kids Three? Holy you shit! Literally, I like, a, like I was like, oh my god, is this a sequel to Demi Kids? But then like that's nuts. And, and then that's how I figured out the other games. I'm like, how do you think I know Zoids and all that shit? Because this is the only okay. Oh to be god. fair, Zoids is actually pretty big though. Well, well was. yeah, I mean like, if you, but like the the point is, is like all the Game Boy Advance games that I know like. Dude, kids grew up with shit like Minish Cap on the fucking... Th this guy, when he was downloading ROMs, would just download the most obscurely fucking 
out out of like who this, the fuck this dude, Demi Kids? Who would this it? dude? This dude scrolled right past fucking Zelda, <laughs> right past Pokemon, right past anything else, dude, and this, he was like Demi yeah, Kids. This is the guy that like when you ask him like, oh, what's your favorite fucking like stealth game? He doesn't say Metal Gear. He doesn't say fucking Splinter Cell. <laughs> nah, bitch. He brings up Left Alive or something on the PS4. Oh, like wow. some <laughs> random fucking game that no one's ever heard of. I love and it. He that passes that... it off. <laughs> That, that's just my oh shit man I, I got I got the best 3ds game what do you want to play oh dude I'm gonna load up fucking strange journey or something like dude that's actually not gonna a only good game though strange yeah journey. I know I know but like <laughs> if you got that what are you gonna play persona Q or or Q2 or fucking strange journey dude it's 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 like the the fucking games that I would end up playing it would, literally that's that's where it would come out to but I guess to wind it back to like fucking persona <laughs> 3 it's just like this remake that has come out so many things in it are like like i've played it i've got to like mm. level 70 like floor 70 of tartarus dude in the original ps2 release i could do one mini boss and then my characters would like fucking get tired and i would just like spend the night this um, i can get to the border floor like the end of tartarus before the next in day season, one in, in one day <laughs> That's I love that shit. I love that. That's what I'm all about as well. Because I remember when I played Persona Five, and I have to like, the first day that I get into the the palace, I like, okay, I'm gonna make it to the end, and I'm gonna grind like a motherfucker, like ten levels, fifteen levels, and then just take the entire month to do social links and confidence. Dude, like my the characters in the game would be like, I'm tired. I'm like, bitch, you ain't fucking tired. <laughs> We're not leaving until we can fucking solo Kamashito each and every one of us. <laughs> like, you wanna go home? You got a home, bitch. You stay here. This is your home now. I know where you live. We live in the same. You know dorm. that's that's one thing that I've actually heard regarding this game is that uh, Tartar Tartarus just seems to be a much more enjoyable experience. They've expanded mm. it. They've taken out exhaustion mechanics. Yeah, yeah. It sounds well, to me like they the, the they best, gave it the Persona Five treatment. The best way to say mm. it is: you remember the meta metaverse from Persona Five, where you go into the yeah. little yes. subway. Yep, that's all Tartarus is. It's like just yeah, like, it's basically right. that. Yeah, and, and like and this is my only downside with Persona Three because it's like after you played Five's dungeons that are all unique and they got a style to them. Right. And that whole random like like a whole game that's centered around the randomly generating dungeon. It's like you know. Yeah. Oh, Which so is you're kinda, saying Tar- it's, Tartarus it's, very much is the entire game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it yeah. isn't. It isn't like you go off and grind in uh, the uh, passageways. Yeah, no. no. And that was something that that was something that was added with Persona Four because unlike Three, Persona Four had the same kind of thing. These palaces are like the the channels that the characters would show up, and they were all unique. You had like the bathhouse, you have the castle, you had the video game world. Um, then Persona Five just took that idea again and just kept going with it. And so also question, added. How did they? How did they explain the, it? The, the whole fucking. How did um, they explain what? How did they explain this, like uh, lore-wise? When uh, it's all different. It's a, it's different. It's all different. Time. Yeah. None of yeah, the games yeah. are well. They're connected, but none of the worlds or the like. Tartarus is wholly different from the fucking metaverse, like consciousness. Okay. That exactly. Tar- Tar- Tartarus is different. straight up just a place that is affected by the dark hour. Now the channels in four, for what I remember, it's been a while, but for what I remember, it's like a reflection of the person that's trapped yeah. inside. That's the thing. They, right. they reflect something where, which is kind of like again, I, I told you this the other night. I kind of have like now an issue with the story of Persona Four, because it kind of goes against it at the end because it's all about uh, wanting to do more, not being in this position that was put by society. And then at the end, they go like, you know what? Yeah, actually, I do want this position in society. It's mm-hmm. it's kind of it's kind of go kind of like a weird message. I don't know. So why do you feel like that it instead of going against society, they're like, no, 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 we embrace society. Like, uh, that's how I see it, at least for the social links. Like, most of the stories are going to be, oh, man, I am angry. Then the middle of the journey is like, why are you angry? Oh, because uh, society wants me to do this thing and I don't want to do it. And I'm going to fight to be against it. And then by the end, it's, no, you know what? I want to be this thing. I want to be the thing society wants me to be. And, <laughs> and, and, and that and applies for like, every character. Did- yeah. And then you're just like, why did I just waste 40 hours of my life for you yeah, to that... just realize, you know what? I wanted this after all. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's something weird that I'm noticing now with Persona 4 story. Well, I mean, story-wise, you know, it's something that I probably wouldn't want to spoil for, like, anybody who's interested in it. It's like... Yeah, yeah, no. I didn't the, talk the, about yeah. the beats. Yeah. For anybody that's into, like, these games, it's like the story and the twists and turns that it takes is... Literally the only, like, one of the only reasons that I really jump into the game. I think, 
I've never played a Persona game with a bad storyline, just like I've never played a Yakuza game with a bad storyline either. So Exactly. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. Um, they're all great um, stories on their own. And like the thing is that Persona 4, it's so different from Persona 3, and Persona 5 is so different from 4 and 5 and 3. They're, they all have this unique aesthetics and colors that they get associated with it, which makes me wonder what they're going to do for Persona 6. I'm excited to see that kind of like uh, a theme going. Mm-hmm. It's going to be interesting to see. So in terms of the storyline, I... From what I've uh, from what I've come to understand, is that this remake is based on the PS2 version, and the uh, base PS2 the, version, the, the PS2, base yeah, PS2 yeah. version, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and what came out later was FES, which was the PlayStation it's like the Portable Royale version. For it's the Royale, yeah. It's still PS2, yeah. but it has like an extra mode with like 30 hours. But we don't talk about but it. But that one, that one comes that one comes with more uh, storyline. It comes with an epilogue it can't but yeah. it also yeah, apparently yeah. comes with a female lead which imaru no, no, no. will F- definitely F-E-S go off if he is no if he is not portable comes with a female lead that's a oh, psp yeah. exclusive version so let me explain oh, how god. fucked the persona 3 releases okay this is why, <laughs> oh, god yeah this yeah. is why motherfuckers are mad okay <laughs> so let me let me explain something all right Look, okay so Dude, before i go off to it <laughs> there's four releases of persona okay persona 3 on playstation 2 original Persona 3 FES for PS2, which is the Royale, right? Like, it came out a year yep, later with yep. extra content. Persona 3 Portable for PSP. All right, for anybody who's watching, you know, fucking, you know, one, one of these <laughs> bastards, okay? The oh, my gone. baby. I have my and, then, uh, and then you've got Persona 3 Reload, which is the remake released, like, a few days ago. So this is why people are fucking pissed. Because every single version requires you to give up something, Okay. So, mm-hmm. Persona 3 FES, it has anime cutscenes, an actual 3D world that you can run around in, and everything, and extra content, and it has, like, the epilogue, which is the answer, right? Now, the epilogue isn't fucking great, all right? Like, you know... Oh, man, not... we don't want to talk about the answer. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, you know, that, that's an, that should have remained unanswered, but anyways... <laughs> the, the, point, the point is, going in beyond it, right? Like, so, that, that sucked. Persona 3 Portable, okay? So this is, like, it added... I think... It, does it have the same content as FES story-wise, Amara? Uh, it's basically the same, but it's a little bit more streamlined because the thing that they have to give away is that you don't have the 3D world. It's basically mostly a yeah. visual novel kind of thing. Yeah, so Except when you're in Tartarus. That's when it becomes when a game. When you're exploring the social world, it's like an image and you just move a cursor around and you click on, like, representations of what should Some be new ground game. shit. And it's well, the entirety because, of the story. It's the yeah, whole because, story. Because they, because it's a fucking PSP game, you know? So what the fuck are they going to put <laughs> yeah. into it? You know, they got to save space somewhere. So that's exactly. a problem. It doesn't have animated mm-hmm. cutscenes. It's literally just like... It, it is fucking a, PNG a visual of- novel. <laughs> yeah, it's a PNG, like, visual novel. But so, for me, I think it has the best new content, which is a whole new way to play the game, well, which is the female get, protagonist. Well, before you get to the female protagonist, another big difference. Persona yeah. 3 FES... You could only control okay. your main character. You can't control the other party members. So, generally, they were good. Until, I would say, <laughs> around floor 40 to 50 when you unlock this character, Mitsuru, in your party. Oh, my. The Marine Karin thing? Bro, <laughs> I swear to God. If that, dude, when I saw Marine Karin in the new remake, like, a fucking PTSD. I felt like I was fucking... Like, I, was like, I was like fucking... Uh, I was like Walter White. Like, Hank dies. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> not again. No. <laughs> The like, AI was so horrible for Mitsuru, dude, dude. It would spam this attack that would, like... It was a statue, that status attack that would miss all the time. And, and it's like, it's like you know, she's supposed to be one of the smartest fucking characters in the group, but she just does the stupidest shit imaginable. Like, fuck her. <laughs> and then, like, so the portable version, it added the ability to directly control the party members, which is, like, a fucking oh. godsend, you know? Like, thank you, Jesus Christ, for implementing this. So... <laughs> That's the big difference. And like Amara said, they had a female version, the female protagonist, which Amara, you fucking go off. Explain the beauty of that. Oh, yeah, man, Amaru... okay. you're, talking, you're talking to the dude that got level 99 with there, maxed all the stats, got all the fucking everything. Well, the thing is that I love about the female character uh, and that breaks my Other heart. Other than that the fact that it's female. Oh, well, yeah, of course. It's a good design character, of course. Um, and it breaks my heart that apparently it's not even coming to reload. Uh, but the thing is that this character has like an entirely new line. You got your social links with the mail route, which are like, eh, they're okay, they're fine and everything. There's but literally really... one that reverse grooms, bro. Like, let's, yeah, let's not say yeah, they're yeah. okay. They don't really, <laughs> yeah, you don't get the link with the people that you expect to get. Like, Junpei is like your best friend throughout the entire game. You cannot be friends with him. You cannot go out with him. 
Instead, your best friend is some Kenshi asshole who wants to be fucking dating a, a teacher. Yeah, reverse and, living. Yeah, no, it's terrible. You get the... I'm even forgetting. You get the, the exchange student, but yeah, you get that too in the other one. But the thing is that the female route changes a lot of things. They don't add random characters to like... Um, Socialine, that you can be friends with Junpei, you can be friends with Akihiko, you can be friends with everyone there. You can be, they, they replaced Kenji with this fucking great story about a character called Ryo. They changed another Socialine with this great character called Sayori, uh, which go through heavy shit. And it's such a good contrast with the shitty ass characters that you have with the male route. Uh, the other thing that I would like to talk about, uh, at least uh, the- thematic, the thematic. Uh, the theme with the whole game is that it's all about this dark story. It's all about the blues. It's all about dark. It's all about the moon. It's all about that. And when you play with a male character, it's not bad that you have a character design that actually complements that world. Mm-hmm. He's also kind of like dark. He has the blue hair. It's covering its eye. It's also, I don't want to say edgy. It, it's not edgy. It's like it complements the entire theme of the of the game. Your All your friends are also depressed. You like progress the story and you realize that all your friends are also dealing with their own shit, which is great. But then with the female character, what they did is not only they say, okay, uh, the, the blues and the and the reds with the characters. No, because the character design for the female character, it's more like chipper. It's more, it has warmer colors. They have red eyes. She had red hair. It's like everything that contrasts with the sure. co- theme, with the colors of the of the world. I know you're cringing like bad right now. <laughs> it's, uh, like, it's, it's something that I really like because... She just feels like the character is way more happier. It's more like it's like this little light that brights the place where everyone is fucking depressed and your character, you, you have like way better responses. Like whenever you play with a male character and you have like a choice of words saying, oh man, I don't care, or like, oh, get out of here. With a female character, maybe she'll be more gung ho, more like active, more like proactive. It's it's something that I really like about the character. And again, it kills me and a ton of more people that apparently it's not coming to the remake. It's not coming to reload. Well, oh, you but, know, but that, we're gonna get that shit on the dancing games, so though. Don't worry, we we got all that shit in fucking dancing in moonlight. Yo, yeah, dude, moonlight Persona Three, awesome. dude, they have Persona beautiful three, three DDR. models, <laughs> beautiful models that are fucking used for a dancing game. Are you kidding me? I don't know. I well, Imar, you know, me and you, we've played enough games at this point that we know that each other are just when we build. If we have the character creator option. Oh yeah, Yo, me what and the you fuck almost are you always. What you say? I don't fucking do anything with a character <laughs> creator. I don't know if you see me play Street Fighter, motherfucker, but my character is a fucking keto looking bastard. Bud, is it Bud. really? <laughs> Bud, I'm just gonna say this right now. I saw your pal world representative, <laughs> bro. I literally yeah. wanted to get into the game, dude. Fuck me. How do you right, get like, with like? I don't know. You're like a statue or something. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't what the know. Fuck? This. It's a good-looking character. You guys are so you need, fucking. You need to show that on screen, like oh show it on the screen or something. It was, dude. Your character was an abomination. <laughs> my character was fucking. To be gorgeous. to be fair though, your 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 characters usually have slightly more thought put into them than Jordan's does. Because Jordan either does one of two things: he either goes to the most extreme, absurd-looking thing, or he spends an hour and a half detailing over every small detail of it as you should man i don't know it's something that i remember posting the other day it's like when you have a game that allows you to create your character i want to like see a character that actually like works in this world it fits in the world yeah i don't want to play mass effect hit like a fucking super emotional scene and see my character looking like shrek like <laughs> that just takes me out of it dude what do you want me to say i know some people that don't care that that's totally fine but i would well, you know it. and that's like like i was saying me and you We've played enough games. If there's a character creator, me and you have a general idea of what we're going to do. Oh, yeah. We almost always go female. We almost always take time to build the character to look like what we would want them to look like. Yeah, yeah. And then after that, usually usually we, if it's like a, what is it, a Dark Souls type game, we have a build in mind and we build the, the character around looking good. Oh, in that did. type of stuff. And mm-hmm. that's that's why I kind I kind of do understand what you're saying about the female uh character not being available in this. Mm-hmm. There is a certain level of uh there's a certain level of uh customizability that it gives you having the choice between 
your original male character and having that extra female character. It's a different, it's a different perspective on the game. Yeah, like it's another. Uh, it's a great game to play after you like play the original to have like an idea. It's a more streamlined version of the the same story and gameplay. I don't want to like opinion... you off, Amaru, but Poppy's yeah. Playtime Chapter Three just dropped. Yo, what the fuck, Oh my dude? fucking god, yes. Dude, anyways, go on. <laughs> I, I just knew that would excite you guys. <laughs> dude, the only reason sure. you know that is because you saw Charlie streaming it. Oh, oh wow. Boy. Wow. Bitch, I think you underestimate how much I love Poppy's fucking playtime, dude. I think <laughs> fucking oh, yeah, tell me the lore of that. That, that shit is your FNAF. Yeah, that dude. Your FNAF. Dude, what, what's the main character's name? I don't know about the lore about Poppy's playtime, <laughs> but I actually know about the drama about Poppy's playtime. There's hey, drama? Hey, what, well, what's sure what's the main FNAF. character's name? Oh, fucking Poppy, Poppy. playtime. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I set the bar too low for you. I mean, clearly, her, Poppy. <laughs> No, dude, I, I love the drama around it, dude. The fucking plagiarism, fucking acid flipping. I love that shit. But oh, anyways, man. Dude. Talking about power? So, or? wait, that's that's the controversy around it is acid flipping? <laughs> that's it? Mean? I, no, there's a bit more. I got to watch my video again on it. Yeah, uh, there's some research <laughs> some research to be done there. I got to yeah, research again. Dude, did they use AI on it? No, this is a little before AI. Damn, dude. Damn. Nah, dude. Uh, so, th- I got confused by this. But mm-hmm. at, we've established that it's just PS2 base game story that's in this remake. Or now, yeah. There's no, there's no FES, or apparently there's FEMC, which is I'm assuming the uh, female portable main, version. Female main character, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, apparently, um, for what I've heard, there seems to be rumors. This is not confirmed. There seems to be rumor that they are working on DLC that would add the FES content. I'm not sure. And in those same rumors, they actually said that nothing from the female protagonist is going to come. Not That's so unfortunate. Shut up, dude! You, y'all, <laughs> y'all need to get y'all need to get yeah, a petition that, started. That, what 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 is crazy about it is that if you think about it, there's not a definitive way to play Persona Three yet, because it, well, as Muda said, when you're going to play a version, you're giving something up. If you want to play FES, which is the most complete one, you cannot play the female route. If you want to play the female route, you cannot play uh, the answer content. There's still not a perfect, like, complete version of Persona 3. That's you know, that is kind of crazy, because, like, I, I would consider at this point uh, Resident Evil 2 Remake is mm-hmm. the definitive way to play Resident Evil 2. It's because you're a bitch and you don't play the original <laughs> 2. That's that is true. true. We gave you so much shit before that game released because we knew you would not play that shit. I don't give a shit. I'm not playing. Play I'm not or- playing. The original is great. Oh my God. Nah, it's dude, great. I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it. They're literally two separate games. Like, they're actually two like, totally actually, separate games. Yeah, yeah, for real. Yeah, but guess what? The original doesn't matter anymore. Oh, wow. Yeah, it does. Wow. Are but you I, hearing I, this I mean, shit? I guess if you want to be a little bitch about it because you're scared. Yeah, sure, it's sure, absolutely. Dude, no ball. The, original, the original it's doesn't you, matter it, it's you because that's it's not like, canon anymore. You, you, no, I mean, it, it is fucking nah, canon. Nah. You know, it's part of the story. But you and Jordan are like, oh, I can't do tank controls. Like, God, you guys should just stop being fucking vaginas. It's the easiest like, fucking way. Like, yeah, it's awkward if you've never played it, but like after like fucking 10 minutes, you fucking know how to yeah, play why it. Do it's that, fine. Why do you guys act like it's a why fucking bomb it's... defusal tutorial? It's not that hard, dude. It's not that hard. <laughs> like, holy shit, I got used to it. Yeah, you know what? I, play, I played it back in 2017, Resident Evil 2. Mm-hmm. And like, yeah, it sucked for the first five minutes. Going, oh, yeah, it feels kind of stiff. And then I'm like, oh shit, second room in. All right, I'm back in the grind. I'm fucking ready. Sorry, you're killing out. liquors and shit already by that. Nah, like, dude, you got that shit on lockdown by that point. Come on. I have a better way to play it. I'm gonna play it the better way. I mean, I it's know, literally man. two separate games. But you know, I mean, hey, if you want to, yeah, you do you, King. I don't know if I can go off, King. That being said, uh, considering how controversial it is, I wouldn't consider Resident Evil Three to be the definitive way to play Resident Evil Three. Yeah, I mean, when like fifty percent of the fucking game has been removed, yeah, yeah it's different. It be the best way either. That being said, oh, I, okay. To be fair, though, I played it. That game is way better than people give it credit for. Resident Evil Three Remake. Yes, I think it's. Fine, it's way but... it's way better than people give it credit for. Yeah, well, people uh, are pissed off. People are of pissed off about yeah. things being taken out of it. That's the thing. You don't have the frame of reference of the original. You don't know Dude, what they like, take okay, out. Okay, okay. Let's just not try to downplay what they took out. They literally yeah. took out the best part of three: the clock tower. That's oh, what no, they took but the, out. The, yeah. Yeah. No, no, the clock tower is in the background of the fucking oh, nemesis fuck fight. Me. And that <laughs> nemesis fight was boring as fuck, dude. That's, Running in I circles, will give you that. isn't that exciting to you? It's a NASCAR fight, dude. Fuck. Yeah, literally. 
You know, you know when you like put in an entire weapon in a video game just for it to be used fucking once. Oh, that the fucking like... mine launcher shit. Yeah, that yeah. fucking sucks. Um, I would say I would definitely say the obviously the original Resident Evil Four is fantastic and it's great. Mm-hmm. I per I love it. I I firmly believe that Resident Evil 4 remake is the way to play Resident Evil 4 at this point. Would you have played Resident Evil 4 original if it was tank controls? Like probably you know, not. classic. I'll be honest with you. No, probably he would not. have fucking shit himself and wet his dice <laughs> if he fucking had tank controls. That's why, dude. <laughs> tank control. I've it's never had bad. to play a game with tank controls. It's Here's not that the bad. thing. Back in the day, I used to play a lot of games. I used to play... Here's the thing. I used to play Super Mario 64. I can't play it anymore because the controls just feel that fucking janky to me. And I wonder to myself how I ever played this. Okay, this guy is actually trolling. Like, Jesus Christ. Fucking like, how uh, do you have a problem? How, how do you, do you have a problem with 64, Hold on. With 64 control? control? What? Uh, fucking Goldeneye, Goldeneye on the sixty-four. No, 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 that's no, another no. one. Two separate no, fucking no. game. Buddy. That's another Mario one where. <laughs> that's another one where I'm just like, how the that game fuck did I play this as a by kid? God, with how good it's controlled. <laughs> what do you mean? They I don't really know about changed. that, man. Have you played three D worlds? It's basically the same. No, i the, the only the only Mario game I've ever played is sixty-four. I haven't played Paper Mario. I haven't done Odyssey, Mars? Galaxy. You have a Wii? <laughs> I had a Wii. I just never played it. And you didn't fucking think, oh shit, let me get Mario Galaxy, like AK, the, one of the five good games on the system. No, dude. <laughs> oh, wow. Literally. <laughs> okay, so for for Bro, reference, you don't like chicken shit, dude. For oh, reference, play, back in the day, <laughs> back in the day during the time of uh, the Wii coming out, okay. my games at that time, a, I still had a PlayStation Two. My parents refused to buy me a PlayStation 3 or an Xbox 360. That's good. That's the so, best way to play Sonic Unleashed. So I, <laughs> I was still playing on the PS2. And uh, when they got in, at the time, I was also playing Guitar Hero 2 and 3. Okay, so we get the Wii. And my parents are like, oh, this will be great. It's a good way for them Wait, to, you know. Why did your parents want to get you a fucking Xbox or a PlayStation? Was it because were they scared that you were? Because they hate they the hated how much I played the play the uh, game systems. And to be fair, yeah, I played them a lot as a kid. Mm-mm. But that being said, inside my living room was a lot better than outside in the fucking elements. <laughs> Well, at least you got some of that. I didn't get like to, uh, a PS2 until 2008, and before that, my ass was playing Sega Genesis, man. Also, I want to point out this: the day that my parents bought me a Nintendo DS, not a 3DS, a DS. Okay. I want. I wanted uh, a uh, Pokemon game. Na na ne ne. They ain't <sighs> giving me a Pokemon game. You want to know what they gave me? Pirates of the fucking Caribbean. On DS? Yep. Dude, that shit's Bro, banging. I don't know what you're talking about. Sh- no, I never played it. <laughs> no, man, I don't even know. It was, it was dog shit. It was actual dog shit. Also, you want to know the second game they bought me? Are you far, Are you smarter than a fifth grader? Why are you talking all this shit? Your parents are so... Many, you know what my fucking dad bought me for the Game Boy one time? <laughs> Mech Platoon. Do you know what the <laughs> fuck that is? <laughs> My dad was a fucking <laughs> random dude. You know, you know that guy brought home Tomba Two one day. I, dude, I couldn't, I couldn't even imagine where the fuck he came from. <laughs> like, he's coming home. He goes to the drugstore. He's like, man, this game oh, is half naked, pink haired, fucking motherfucker biting the. <laughs> Muda's gonna asshole. love this. Muda's yeah, gonna love like, this. Gonna no, love dude, this. he goes like, this is the best part. Like, he goes to the fucking store. He looks at the PlayStation. And it's like, huh? Let's see, Metal Gear Solid or. What's this other game here? Akuji the Heartless. Man, what the fuck would he... Akuji the Heartless, you know? Akuji the King. Heartless. Oh, you know what? Gran Turismo or Scars? Do you know what Scars is? No. No. What the fuck okay. is Scars? Wait, what, what, what system is it for? I've heard of PS1 this. PS1 and N64. Scars is like Mario Kart if you took like animals and like made fucking digital versions of them. Yeah, that's what they bought me instead of Gran Turismo. Kids would come to my house. It was like, oh, shit, what racing game do you have? Scars? Fuck, Scars. Dude, what? what? It's crazy. <laughs> Scars. Yeah, fucking I don't, so, I've never heard about that game. <laughs> so to be fair, so actually, good question here. Were either of you ever, were either of you ever allowed 
to own M-rated games as a kid. My family didn't give a fuck, dude. I got, no, I played Mortal Kombat. My dad went into the store, bought Manhunt for me. He didn't give a <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I remember, I distinctly remember being five or six years old, playing Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 and being scared of the fatalities, which are like goofy as fuck right now, man. <laughs> so, my I- parents refuse to allow me to have M-rated games. You want to know what games I had in my collection? I had 007 Nightfire. That's great. I had Burnout. I had Burnout Three Takedown, Crash, That's great. Uh, Crash Bandicoot, Wrath of Cortex. He's listening like every okay. great game. What the fuck? Yeah, dude. What the fuck? I had Dragon Ball Z Budokai. <laughs> okay. I had Duel Masters. Okay, there you go. One stinker. I got. Uh, I had Guitar Hero Two and Three. Uh, I did not have Kingdom Hearts. Even though it was rated T. I did not have Final Fantasy, even though it was rated T for teen. You want to know why? Because they heard from somebody that it had nudity in it. Dude, you had, like, Uh, fucking bomb games. What the hell, dude? My ass was playing playing Castle Revolution by then. What the fuck? I had Naruto Uzumaki Chronicles. Okay, that sucks. And you want to know how I got to own... Oh, and Tony Hawk's Underground. You want to know how I got to own my only N-rated game? You me down. suck a dick or something? <laughs> Dude, I shit you not. This is back this is back in the day when video game stores were still a thing. I went there. Okay, bro, we don't live in 3022. There's still a thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they no they are not. Yeah, they, they are. are. They, I went to a video they game don't, store. No, 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 like a rental place. Oh. Okay. Like a rental okay, okay. store. Uh I went in there. It wasn't a blockbuster. This was like a a mom and pop small town video game store. I rented Resident Evil 4 and never returned it. Beautiful. That's what you do. That is how I'm I got to own. And guess what? Because I was afraid of them taking it away, I had to hide the I had to hide the case. Oh, that's that's so cute. It was hidden. It was hidden. Credit card or something. <laughs> it yeah, was hidden. Should've. It was hidden in the uh, false ceiling up above my bed. Damn, dude, that, dude, that's like fucking just hiding drugs for your parents. You're just, oh, shit, <laughs> but I don't have M-rated games in my home. Fucking hell. I, and here's the thing, back, it, it took until I had to buy myself a PlayStation 3. Mm. When I bought myself a PlayStation 3, because I bought it with my own money, all bets were off. I could pretty much own anything I wanted. Oh, you yeah, know the first M-rated too. game I went to GameStop and bought? What? Call of Duty Black Ops. My condolences. <laughs> PS3 version. <laughs> Yo, what the fuck you got against Call of Duty Black Ops? It's a fantastic game. I got Call of Duty Black Ops. Like, you could have bought any other... Fu- you know, you could you have bought fucking GTA 4. All right, you could have bought fucking Bioshock. Oh, to be fair, to, wait, stop. With this to, be fair, to be fair, we all know I don't like GTA, despite the fact... Oh, yeah, sorry. He doesn't like on, good games audience. Exactly. Yeah, despite yeah, the fact course. that on my my shelf over here of mm-hmm. games that I'm that I have collected... Yeah. I have GTA 3, San Andreas, and Vice City, all untouched, with manuals, all with maps, <laughs> untouched. By untouched. the way, Muda, I was thinking, when I went to the video game store last week, uh, they had a sealed copy of um, Liberty City Stories that I thought about buying. Why the fuck would you buy it? You're never going to play any of them. I don't understand <laughs> Dude, this fucking guy. He's still he has, own. You have San Andreas, by far the best game on the PlayStation 2. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. That is by Man, far that's the That's a lie. Great. What, what, yeah, okay, what is the true. best game on the PS2? Please tell me what's the best game on the PS2 right now. Don't say Resident Evil 4. Don't say Burnout Resident 3 Takedown. Burnout 3 Takedown? Yeah, Burnout 3 Takedown yeah. fucking gets on its fucking knees and sucks <laughs> off <the> fucking GTA <laughs> San Andreas. It's a great but, game, but it's yeah. not GTA San Andreas. What the fuck yeah, are you talking about? Yeah, I mean, like, about? San Andreas is fucking San Andreas. You have San Andreas, and he still does not play. I don't know fucking know. It's one of the greatest fucking games ever made. Not even on the PS2, just ever made. Yeah, he, for he real. Had, like, I, no. Twenty what years later, no. what do you mean? What do you mean? No, I, I guess mean, all no? the fucking sites reviewing it. It must be fucking. I've, dude, I've tried playing it. It's how far? It's how, not like, how, far how far you got there? How far did you get, you get there? What's, 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 I don't know. Probably like two hours. It's been years since I ever touched did it. Did you ever drive to the other city? Fuck if I know. I don't remember. Uh, did, did, you know, no, no. Wait. First off, two hours in an open world game with Kyle is like he hasn't. He has done two <laughs> missions max. <laughs> That's does, the, my, no, my guy hour, hasn't even my guy hasn't even done reuniting the families yeah, by that yeah, point. Yeah, your two your two hour metric holds no fucking way. Two hours if you gave GTA to two me, hours. I'd to be fair, be yeah, San you're right. Fierro, your ass was. Did you okay? Name all the cities in San Andreas. 
I, do you want me to go get the map? I no, can no, do no, it no, then. No, 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 not the map. Let's see. What's the, how many cities did you go to in the game? Uh, opens Google. Dude, um, I, only, I only remember maybe two that I went to. No, maybe. Dude, you, if you played it for two hours, you only went to Los Santos. Which is <laughs> okay, cool. one of I don't the three know. cities. One of the three cities and several towns around. You know, you know how I beautiful might it is when you play GTA? Like, let me tell you the magic of San Andreas. It's like, you don't understand, GTA 3 was one city. And Vice City was its own city for, well, you know, GTA Vice City, self-explanatory. Mm-hmm. San Andreas was like, oh, shit, you get Los Santos, which is fucking huge. A whole and then state. it's like, yeah, and then it's like, oh, shit, Carl, you, you fucked up. You got to go to another city. See, they have San Fierro, which is San Francisco. And then they have Las Vegas. Las... Dude, I still remember at, back then driving into Los Venturas on the, on the freeway and just seeing the lights and everything. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. experience. Going around the the, um, the Actually, airplane no, cemetery, no. going around the airplane cemetery with your like bike or whatever, listening to Hold the Line or K Dust, yeah. man, that I, I like dusk with like the orange. Will, that shit is life changing. I will firmly defend this. I think the game that I had the most fun playing on PS2 uh, was probably God of War Two. Legitimately, I think that might be one of my. That's definitely top three for me. That's not bad. I mean, it's it's yeah, no, dude. Combined. Shut up! It is a damn good game. <laughs> it's a good game. Yeah. I, yeah. I okay, like I'm it. gonna say this right now. I'm gonna say this right now. My mm. top three PlayStation Two games, just off the top of my head, top without three you're looking at top three. Okay. My top three okay. would okay. definitely, in no particular order, would definitely be Burnout Three Takedown, uh, God of War Two, mm-hmm. and probably Final Fantasy Ten. Like, this is why I can't take you fucking seriously. GTA San Andreas was not in that list at all. What are yours, Marit? Mine? Fucking GTA San Andreas, okay? You got okay. Final Fantasy That's 10, one. Obviously. That's beautiful. Uh-huh. Metal Gear Solid. No, actually, Metal Gear Solid 2. I like 2 over 3. Mm-hmm. Um. Well, for me, it's Metal Gear Solid 3, Persona 3, and then The Warriors. I, the what the fuck? Such a good, you don't know the Warriors? The Warriors is great. No, I I know the Warriors. You know the Warriors. We've seen the movie like that three was, times. That was that was just that was just out of left field for me for some reason. Yeah. The, the Warriors uh, game is wanna, awesome. It's it's something that would never happen again, but it's such a cool game. You know what game I think is firmly underrated on the PlayStation Two though? What? Mm-hmm. Uh, Resident Evil Outbreak. Dude, fuck you! That game was hard <laughs> as shit. Yeah, it, it was. Fucking Suck. It's dude, a game, game that you fuck. can fucking play, dude. You have to fucking like play online with like net play. Have to log in into like make an account in some weird shady Russian site, and then you can play online with your bros. And, and then like, and then you have to also deal with like the fucking like dipshits that are playing with you on those servers, anyway. <laughs> Hell, no. yeah. Hell no! Help no! That's, that's, that's what, what I hate about here. that fucking game. It's like this is what I hate about online games in general with randoms. They're just un. You just you just cannot play it with a random person unless you want to like die. Like you want to. Oh my god! Those, I, I'm getting something. flashbacks to like when we used to play GTA Online with randos, oh. dude. That, that, I haven't played GTA Online with human beings other than you guys for the last four to five years. Yo, it's you wanna know? You wanna solo know. sessions, friends only sessions. I'm done with fucking randos in GTA Online. Do you want to know what my favorite memory of GTA Five is? What? I know. Launch what day. Looking at fucking clouds. What do you mean mm. launch day? Launch day. Launch I wasn't day. looking at fucking crowds, clouds or whatever. I was no, no, no. The launch day. Launch day. Player. Launch <laughs> day. Launch day. When like me and you played it with uh, what's his name, Rich. No, I remember Ooh. that. No, it wasn't Cloud Simulator. It wasn't the fault of the game. It was Rich's fucking brain dead incest baby <laughs> friend. And let me tell you fucking why. So okay, <laughs> let me explain the night that we had to play it. Okay, so oh my god, Rich Nificent was Ooh. another creator we used to know years ago, right? He was part of the Sticky Paddle Gaming Network. Sweet Jesus. Rich had his fucking friend who was like, I don't know if he was like mentally challenged or like if he had like a fucking if he was hit on the head as a child or like fucking something. <laughs> Maybe he had too much to drink. This guy was such a fucking abject retard. Okay, and I mean that with the hard R, by the way, too. <laughs> so th- we were doing the prison heist in GTA Five. So oh my god, I remember this, this guy. His TV had a zoom feature, right? So some TVs have like a feature where you can zoom in. You know? Oh god! And so his TV was zoomed in, so he couldn't see the amount of health he had or the fucking map. So he was just re- he was fucking blind. So every time, like 
we must have restarted that mission 25 fucking times, dude. I was the pilot for that mission. I was fucking flying and doing circles and sandy shores. And Muda this was so fu fucking salty by dude, the end of it. Two fucking hours dealing with him. And he was like, he literally sounded like fucking Boomhauer from King of the Hill. Like, he couldn't even <laughs> communicate at all. Like, I never wanted to, like, fucking just die. Yeah, it, it wasn't the fault of the game, Kyle. It wasn't Klaus. It was a fucking stupid fucking friend that joined in. I, I distinctly, I just remember at the end of that session, I just remember Muda going just a really heavy sigh. And I heard him take off his headset. Just, he didn't even turn it off. He just, Threw it on the fucking, like, desk. And I heard just the sound of him disconnecting. Just a doo-doo. Oh, and God. I was like, oh, damn. Muda is imagine. pissed. Because to get to that point, you need to, like, do a prep of, like, 10 minutes to fucking drive around, get the bus, get the plane, fly around, wait for the, pe the people to shoot, and then you have to go pick out. That that shit adds up. Like, that's, like, 25 minutes. Oh, wait. Oh, absolutely. Only to fail? Yeah, no, fuck that shit. And because of this yep. one fucking idiot that was his friend. And you can't even... So, the GTA Heist, back in the day, you had to do all... You had to have four fucking people. All right? So, yep. that it is what it is. <sighs> we literally had to have this fucking moron play with us. And that was it. <laughs> It's like you're forced to be with this idiot. And we didn't. We didn't have an option. And That's you right. You can't even give them a job where it's just like super easy to do. Like this motherfucker couldn't even run around and shoot a gun. You think I'm gonna let him fly a fucking plane? Are you fucking <laughs> high? What the fuck? Can you <laughs> imagine they're trying to line the vellum? Like no, dude. Fucking hell. You know, it's it's no. like it's like when me and me and Jordan are on a heist with you guys. I can do a little bit. Jordan generally not so much. And you and Amaru just go and you do your thing. And then magically you say, okay, you guys come this way. And we're like, oh, okay, cool. You couldn't even give that role to this guy because he'd find a way to fuck it up. You know, and I miss when games have like the four player fucking co-op. Nowadays, you know, I loaded up Gotham Knights because I'm like, man, can I convince you guys to play that game with me like all the way through? And then I realized apparently Gotham Knights is only two players maximum. Yeah, that, I, I, that caught me off guard too. Four fucking characters you can pick from in the game, and it's like, oh well, two player maximum. <laughs> That's fucking insane. And then, and then, and then the company's like, oh, I don't understand why the game didn't fucking sell. Well, I mean, really? Like, come on now. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> two player maximum? Yeah, yeah I didn't for a know. game that has four fucking like, oh, you get to play as that, that was or Red Hood. The like, whole yeah, the whole gimmick was oh shit, you had the bad family, the whole bad family. It's like okay, well, pick two. What I thought. Wow, I thought I had always operated under the assumption that that was a four-player game. No, nope. no, it's not. No, you know what is a four-player game? Suicide Squad, when it works. No. Okay, uh, are, are we really uh, going to bring up Suicide Squad? That, of now, course now you're going to bring that game up, dude. That game runs up. You know, you know my favorite part about Suicide Squad when I played it? Connection failure. You have been disconnected from the game. That oh, was my favorite oh, yeah, boss yeah. battle, dude. I love that boss <laughs> battle so much. Dude, I picked Captain Boomerang. I was in the middle of this fight. Connection disconnected. Dude, that is the hardest boss to go up against, dude. Because, like... Life heard, services. Yeah, like, like I kind of <laughs> heard the boss. that. Like, I was reading on Reddit about it, too. And they were just like, yeah, in order to beat the boss, you just have to get really lucky and hope that Rocksteady paid for the server farm that day. And maybe <laughs> you get through. Like, you just have to get fucking lucky about it. You know, when I was Steam refunding it, they didn't even ask you what the fuck was wrong with the game. They just knew. It's like, yeah, no, we know, we know. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, put, put the request through. <laughs> yeah. Leave it there. No, dude, do you it's think? Insane. Do you think? Uh, do you think Steam legitimately turns off uh, asking people why they're refunding it when they when they get enough uh, re requests in? They're I mean, just I think, like, I think they just like if they realize it's shit enough, they just like we don't <laughs> we don't care if you played more than two. It's gonna be yeah. Hours. It's, it's gonna, gonna be it's gonna be a level of like self awareness for that. Like, okay, yeah, you're gonna refund this shit. Yeah, yeah, sure, no problem. I mean, I'm sure they're not gonna refund Persona Three because Imaru's like, I wish I got to play as a woman in the game. But like, oh, no, yeah, you no, fucking of course. knew there wasn't gonna be a chick in this, and you still bought it. Fuck you. I didn't buy it. I got that shit on Game Pass, my guy. To be fair, you want to know what game I wish I could have returned this year? What? Starfield. You know it's coming I to wish PlayStation I... now? Apparently it's coming to PlayStation, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if it's going to be fun then. Microsoft's big exclusive is coming to Sony now. Oh, dude, can what it be fun hell? now? That's going to be cool. Can it be fun now? <laughs> 
I, I don't, hey. Listen, boys, I don't think installing it on a PlayStation is going to magically make that. I don't know. What I do remember, Muda, is uh, you trying to, like, fucking huff that copium. It's like, man, he's oh, great. Dude. It's actually great with the story. Like, he, what he the tried. fuck did I huff that copium? At the start with the game released, I remember you well, asked. Well, yeah, dude, I mean, I... everyone's going to lie to themselves when they make a fucking purchase. <laughs> but, like, yeah, you know, at least I, I just... wasn't huffing the copium, like, two months after release. It's literally that picture of the guy read. dabbing. It's like, oh man, this great. Yeah, the game's great. You don't even know. And then just crying. It's like, man, I can't believe I wasted $60 on this shit. I distinctly remember sitting there launch night. I played, fuck, I don't know, maybe an hour and a half of it. And that entire hour and a half was me struggling to stay awake. It was that dog shit boring. Well, I mean, I mean, the I mean, name's good purchase because it puts you to sleep. You could use a sleep medication. That dude, honestly, mean. though, I'd rather just go to Walmart, buy that bullshit melatonin, and take about four I'm, of those. Honestly, It'll put like, me to sleep. This is going to be fucked up to say, but I was more bricked up playing Shenmue than I was playing Star <laughs> Oh, yeah, dude. When I get the <laughs> fucking forklift simulator shit. Dude, like, honest to God, like, when I was playing Starfield one of the nights, I was like, man, I just want to load up Shenmue, like, I miss the forklift job. I miss waking up every day to do the forklift job. And like, mm, oh, God, Saturday morning, can't wait to go to the fucking warehouse. <laughs> Dude, I mean, like, imagine buying a video game back in the day, like, yeah, it's super cool for the Dreamcast. I kind of wish more games did that, where, like, you know, you just bought the experimental artsy shit that yeah. cost millions to make. We're kind of far from removed from that. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, like... though, that's I do miss that, especially from the PlayStation Two days, mm-hmm. where there's, anybody there's, could make anything. There's only you know what? There's only one game that is like that now, and it's Death Stranding. Like that's the only game that I the ever artsy style style game. It's the only game where it's like somehow Kojima got that. Let me tell you something. Kojima's got fucking. 10 Riz, all right, like 10 Charisma or something like that. Like just, the guy's a fucking dweeb. I love him. Like, just imagine, right? Like, Sony's a big company, okay? So, Sony, massive corporation. And, like, when they make a when they make a game every year, like an exclusive, it's a fucking safe exclusive, right? Like, God of War, great mm. game, but it's still, like, a third-person, like, hack and slash. You know, it's a, it's a Sony game. exclusive game, yeah. Yep. Kojima fucking spawns out of nowhere... And, like, rizzes up the Sony employee enough to tell them, (laughs) we're going to make Amazon Prime Delivery Simulator with monsters. And we're going to... Somehow, that got fucking accepted. And not only did it get accepted, they just made... He just made a trailer for Death Stranding 2 on the beach. Do you guys see that trailer yet? Which means he... Which means he's officially sold them on a second one. Well, no, did you see the trailer? The one on the beach. No. I don't don't think I did. Okay, so the trailer is so fucking Hideo Kojima-y. Um, I wonder if we can like watch it together if you guys like seven minutes it's pretty insane like we can sure I'm, I'm down share, we can I'm down share it here actually it's, it's gonna be weird like, oh yeah cool yeah there's a screen share let yeah. me uh, grab it quick good 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 yeah Death Stranding 2 on the beach and he's also making a, a espionage game again so yeah that, that's the best game. part that's the best part of like this announcement he's like hey guys what's up I'm making a, a game goodbye screen. that's it Refuses to elaborate. Leaves. <laughs> That's just Kojima at this point, dude. All right, I, I, was... I think you guys can see. Oh, I see. By the way, yeah. the, the fucking graphics on this thing are insane. So these are in-engine, like, and obviously it's like Death Stranding, very much the same thing. Whatever they showed made it to the final product. Let me but see. Like, yeah, yeah. I saw the state of play, but I just dipped out after the Sonic Shadow reveal. Dude, you're so fucking cute. <laughs> I'm not I'm kidding. genuinely curious about this. I never did play. I played a little bit of the oh, original. Oh, Death Stranding 1 is great. I, I have it. Platinum map, Do so. I have it? I feel like I have it. Should we, like, mute the audio for the... But I don't think we need to. If we do... No, I don't think we need to. Out. I remember we were trying to, like, decipher what the fuck the first game was about with the two trailers we got. <laughs> What you know what's funny? Hell? Like, the original game is so easy to understand. Like, it's not yeah. as convoluted as it ended up being. Could you must leave the only guy who can do shit like this? <laughs> Literally. So, when you watch this trailer, so you understand the gameplay for Death Stranding, right? Yeah. Yeah. Deliver shit. So, yeah, it's literally just delivery simulator. And, like, he convinces these, like, Hollywood actors and actresses to just agree to this shit. <laughs> I don't know how. 
<laughs> Could you imagine Ooh. like Norman Reedus? Like he's like, oh, dude, I'm gonna make The Walking Dead. Also, I'm on Death Stranding, and he loves working on it too. It's insane. <laughs> he loves that shit. On dude, seeing Ow. this kind of stuff though, ew. Seeing this kind of stuff just makes me realize, uh, what kind of great stuff we missed out on, uh, with Silent Hills. Oh man, that's still like, oh god, this whole thing. Oh shit, it's Asuka. What the fuck? Dude, I'm telling you, this shit is fucking insane. But like, the graphics for this game, like, I'm not gonna lie, man, it, it, it like challenges GTA 6 even. Oh wait, is there any way to lower the volume of the video? Uh, Kyle, can you lower the audio a little bit in the trailer? That good? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that, that should work. It's destroying my ears. Like, now I have to wonder why the fuck are they black and white? Why are they monochrome? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna fuck? say, that's a little it's, weird. It's a Kojima thing, dude. Trust me, when Death Stranding 1 was revealed, me and Amara were like, what the fuck is he on? Yeah, like Asylum for the, 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 the feeling. <laughs> I remember that. Kojima, Kojima does go off for uh What the hell is up with those though? hands? I'm t dude, trust me. If you try to make sense of a trailer, you're already like losing it. There's no way. If you see something that you don't understand, you say it's Kojima. Let's say that. That should be enough. It's just Kojima, man. The oh, now they're not. This game. Yeah, exactly. The now they're not is, monochrome. When you see the environment, and you can stop the trailer around there just to see what the world looks like, it's fucking yeah, yeah. gorgeous. That oh, well, I'm way in this game. I didn't know. Dude, he was in the first game, too. <laughs> Everyone in the Alan Wake community is like, oh shit, it's Alan Wake. Yeah. Right next Put to the right cock. Next Let's to your go. cock. What is. Dude, we're going to Mexico in this game, dude. Hell Holy yeah. Jesus. That's bright. Is there asylum for the feelings there, too? No, nah, dude, he's gonna switch it with ASAP Rocky, dude. <laughs> yeah, 21 Holy Savage. Holy hell. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's like a worst Starfield. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, it's like Starfield, <laughs> but good. <laughs> what the fuck? I didn't know that there was whole ass cities in this game. Well, so you can stop it right here. The I guess just to just to show you of like what the game well it's the game is kind of like the best way to describe it is like Oregon Trail. You go you basically in the original game you go from east to you west. You hope you don't die of dysentery. Yeah, you yeah, connect please. the world together and shit. And that's kind of what Death Stranding is. But uh you can actually like end the screen share here just so it doesn't fuck up nice. the thing. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't kill the water. The water physics actually looks pretty nice. No, I'm, I'm telling you, like the fucking environments in this game, like, and this is a reason why I love the original. It's like you don't get those kind of games anymore because back in the PS2, people forget like PS2, even the early PS3 era, like mm -hmm. game developers were fucking experimental with so much weird shit. Yeah, <laughs> like the original, like when the PS3 360 dropped. I would say that first, like, four or five years when GTA 4, Bioshock, that's when, like, Metal Gear Solid 4, that's when they were, like, going ham on the on the, on the the systems. Like, they were really pushing these things and trying new mm. things out. Yeah. And even, right. like, last generation, and even, like, PS5, like, like, Xbox series, it's like, I feel like there's less attempts at really experimenting with those systems and pushing it beyond just making the graphics look, I guess, shinier. Like... The thing with this game that I really liked was they, like, the the gameplay in the original is like they were they were focusing on like tra like it made traversing in an open world like you actually had to like pay attention the whole time right like you had to keep mm -hmm. balancing shit managing doing all this extra stuff versus like a traditional game where you just hold the analog up and right go God, on yeah, autopilot yeah. right you have to stay engaged yeah even like with shooters right like 
the reason why I don't get so excited over shit like Call of Duty anymore is because I don't really see the gameplay evolving. Like, I remember when Siege came out, and Siege blew me away because it was like you were blowing up walls, barricading, mm-hmm. and doing all this cool shit. And it was using the, the new systems at the time to really good effect, right? Like, you what Siege yeah, yeah. did... You couldn't do on the PS3. You couldn't fucking you couldn't blow everything up and like shoot through walls and like change up the play field. Exactly, and then like, yeah. Like you don't feel like there's that's much jump between the PS5 and the PS4. I exactly. Which is, I don't even feel that either. Yeah. Which is kind of weird. I don't know if it's something about the time because I remember when the PS4 released, I said to myself, and I remember, wow, I don't see much jump between the PS4 and the PS3. I agree. And now in retrospective, I... that's absolutely insane. Such an insane thing to say. To be I was, fair, so go ahead. Sorry. I started playing uh, Splinter Cell Blacklist uh, the other day, and I was actually kind of blown away. It's a PS3 game. It was released in 2014, I believe, and I was actually blown away by how decent the graphics were for that game. Yeah, because I was expecting great. it PS3. I was like, eh, it's probably going to be exactly what I expect from PS3. It's Whoa. actually pretty damn good. Well, Muda, but haven't, you be playing, same... haven't you been playing Arkham Knight again? That game still looks that like still it, came looks out, it could have come you know out game, this year. You know what game still looks like it could have came out this year? Assassin's Creed Unity. And that was like the first few years of the last generation. Oh, yeah. And if you remember, Assassin's Creed Unity got completely clowned when it came out. I mean, like, it was buggy. Don't get me wrong. But, like, it was the only game from a big developer, big publisher out of a big franchise that actually made an exclusive next generation release, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. At the time, Call of Duty still had like advanced warfare shipping on PS3, 4, but Unity was like, we're upping the engine, we're like rendering a hundred, like hundreds of NPCs and like fucking, you know. That was crazy. Kind of that was crazy to see. And like, dude, comparing Unity to like Black Flag, night and day fucking difference, you know? Like, <laughs> Literally, like you could, like you could tell you were playing on the PS4 versus the like an upgraded PS3 game on the four. Um, and I don't really know if I see much of that nowadays. Like, I like I was playing a uh, Yakuza um, Infinite Wealth on the PlayStation Five, and I'm like, oh. aside from the frame rate, and yeah, it looks a little sharper. I wouldn't notice a big difference over the PS4 that I played. Right? Like, I mean, what's what's the last game you you played where you truly say to yourself like? They pushed this. The only one, the last one I can think of is, to a lesser extent, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. That one, I felt like, graphically at least, they really pushed it. But other than that, Mm -hmm. everything else is formulaic in it. It's, it's a funny because pretty standard RPG. I just remember that they're going to release that remaster of Last of Us 2. That, that, have you seen the comparison pictures? It's the same picture. It's the same <laughs> it's fucking the same picture. picture. <laughs> it's insane. Like, Man, that the, the PS4 is still... Me, man. That is, that yeah. is like the most over... Like, I like yeah. Last of Us, but man, it's just a standard... This is why like I got excited for the Death Stranding 2 stuff, because I just like to play a game that is... It's a video game, right? Like, it's fucking supposed to be off the walls and different, you know? Yeah. Um, something that, like, the gameplay is different than your standard third-person shooter. Like... I'm like the only game that I'm excited about for this generation, like genuinely, is GTA 6. And that's because, mm-hmm. like, 10 Fair. years down the road, they've up, like, it feels like a fucking PS5 game or what I expect. Like, exactly. Something that could never be done on the 4. Like, the day when they fucking released the trailer, I didn't have internet. I have to, like, fucking go to, like, a corner in my house that had signal to watch the trailer and just go fucking insane with Muda on the phone. Like, oh, holy shit, yeah. dude, have you seen the, that pan to the city? Like, oh my God, I. It's in, it's huge, and just like San Andreas, we're not getting by city only. We're getting the whole fucking state. We have like two cities. We got a bunch of like small towns. That's the only like next gen thing. Like I'm actually thinking buying a uh, an Xbox uh, Series S just for that. Yeah. You want to know? So, I I thought about it, and the last game that I can actually truly think like pushed the envelope on anything, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Probably Metal Gear Solid Five. MGS Five was one of the most optimized fucking games in the world when it came. Yeah, that shit. I, I, I genuinely calculator. think. Like I just thought about it and I'm like, 
when's the last time I had an experience with a game where I was just like, you know, and damn, that's, this is just a cut above. That's yeah. the like the Kojima stuff too. Like, and it's funny because Metal Gear Solid Five technically is the weakest game story wise in the whole franchise. Oh yeah, that that's without a doubt like the yeah. worst Metal Gear story wise. Yeah. But gameplay wise, that shit clears like gameplay easy. Gameplay wise, like Hideo Kojima, like when he made the open world of Afghanistan, and. So to give you an idea, I was worried about the open world stuff because I'm like open at that moment in time. I started to like kind of die with hearing open world because I'm like, yeah. to me, an open world is most mm-hmm. times a developer uses it like a level select screen, like go here, you know, yep, mission start. The mission is in like this very specific area. Then you go somewhere almost else. almost always a open world isn't a true open world. It's a it's a fake open world that is basically a hub for you to operate out yeah, of. Yeah, but like MGS5, like it really felt like I was running a military company. They hot dropped me to like Africa or Afghanistan and I'm like actually like yoinking people out of the area. Like there's stuff constantly going on. The, yep. the stuff like when you play Metal Gear Solid Five and games like that, what Kojima did and he knows exactly how to keep you constantly engaged and it's like any Japanese developer too, right? Like... I, it's much mm. like Yakuza. Like if you play Yakuza games, um, Yakuza stuff, it's open district. You wouldn't say it's a world because the actual like explorable area is so tiny. But there's oh, yeah, so yeah. much stuff and there's so much shit going on in the background. Like that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. The thing. I prefer having that. That just like an entire like world filled with fucking nothing. Mm-hmm. But it, yeah, the thing. It's so small, but it's so full of like. There's like this little fucking uh, hallways to go. Those little fucking corners. Those little restaurants to well. There's like missions hidden there. There's like fucking robbers, muggers, fucking. Well, like, there's a lot of stuff. There's, it's full of also, life. There's also stuff going on in the background too, right? Like so, when you're playing yeah. MGS Five, you're like developing stuff for your base. You're like flipping through a million menus at a time. You're always doing something. And even with Yakuza, it's like Yakuza always has these things where, as you're fighting in the streets, there's like a clicker game going in the back where you're making money. Like you're doing a million <laughs> yep. things. So exactly. With yeah. the new game that came out, Yakuza Infinite Wealth. They have an entire Animal Crossing mode in the actual fucking game. Oh my god! Yep. So yep. no idea. I'm not e- like okay. So literally Animal Crossing. Like I'm not even like all the Animal Crossing gameplay has been kept intact. They call it Dondoko Island. So the game mm-hmm. introduced a side objective to me. I spent two days, so I have 22 hours of playtime <laughs> in Yakuza. Five hours of that is this main storyline. The rest of it is this side objective, and like it's just again. The gameplay kept me coming back. And then I found out mm. later that there's a fucking randomly generating Tartarus in the game, too. What the so, fuck? Yeah. What? So, like, yes. So, they have Tartarus, Persona 3 Tartarus, in, in uh, Yakuza. So, and don't they have a Pokemon mode in it as well? Yeah, Sujimon mode. So let oh, me my God. You. What is that game now? So, let me explain <laughs> how fucking insane this game is, okay? So, <laughs> so, here's how you play a Yakuza game. You play... Chapter one all the way to six. Chapter six is when they introduced the money farm in the games. Mm-hmm. So, like, you, you guys, which Yakuza games did you guys play? Did... Kiwami one. Uh, I think I played Kiwami one or zero. Okay, so one, I think I played both. both. Okay, so you know in zero, Kyle, when you're playing as Kiryu and you have the real estate mode. Yes. Literally, that's your money farm. So if you max that out, and mind you, every time I come across a Yakuza game, I always spend the eight to ten hours to do the money farm. So by the sure. by the middle of the game, I'm like a multi billionaire. Okay, like I'm fucking <laughs> level. Like I shit you not, I have a Yakuza too. So I'm filming all these videos for the Yakuza Mega video that I have, and like my awesome. gameplay footage for two Kiwami two is so fucked. I am ten hours into the game, <laughs> chapter five, and I'm one hitting the bosses. Like I fucking walk up to a boss. <laughs> I, I am yeah. so leveled up that you cannot level me up anymore. I walk up to a boss fucking punch him once and it, it, it like transitions into the fucking like it's like character into the cutscene you know yep. like i have so much fucking money in this game that i go up to the weapons dealer and and like i just buy the end game stock so I'm, like <laughs> the the final fight in yakuza 2 it's supposed to be this climactic fight against like this big character five hits is all it takes he's fucking gone like <laughs> like i walk in like I walk in, I literally fucking piss and shit all over him, you know, like <laughs> not even a question. So Beautiful. And, and this is what I like too. So like same thing with Yakuza Seven. So in Yakuza Seven, the one before Infinite Wealth, they had this thing called Ichiban Confections. So here's the fucked up story. The whole game you're homeless, technically. But you have this one side objective where you manage a business. Dude, 
10 hours into the game, I have 55 fucking billion yen. So I'm already <laughs> yeah. maxed out on my characters. Fuck? I have so much fucking money. And I love like, breaking games like that. <laughs> by the end of Yakuza 7 story, this last climactic boss battle, the character's level 65. I'm level 99. Dude, <laughs> yeah. I walk in and I just fucking... The reason I did it was the game level spiked so hard in the middle where I'm like, all right, fuck that. You want to do that to me? I'm going to level 99 every fucking character I have. Then I'm going to butt fuck every character that comes across. <laughs> and that's what I did. So with Infinite Wealth, Instead of the main story, I maxed out the Animal Crossing mode, which nets me like 10 grand every like five minutes at this point. And oh I used God. that money. So the whole Pokemon mode, instead of playing it normally, I walked into the Pokemon mode with 250,000 US dollars. <laughs> you bet your ass I bought the <laughs> best Pokemon. I bought them the best fucking steroids. Because here's the thing about Yakuza. <laughs> you can buy them rare candies. You can buy them everything. You can. I spent a quarter million dollars to build the best fucking team, walked into that mode, finished, cleared it. Like, not even a challenge. The fucking Sujimon gods came up. I'm like, you're dead. Insta, like, autopilot. <laughs> yeah. And then I made so Our... much money and items there and weapons that then I went to the weapon. I maxed out the weapon dealer. The weapon dealer's like, they, they're running a fucking weapons factory in Hawaii at this point. Bought the best weapons. I'm walking into Tartarus and I'm butt fucking everything down there. <laughs> it's just all these gameplay loops feeding into each other. And then I'm like, shit, there's a storyline that I gotta play. Fuck. Anyways, we'll get to that at some point. Love that about it. it. I wish more games did that kind of stuff. Like, it's just. Fucking Arceus himself came down and knelt down to Muda and said, What can I do for you, Master? But I know you guys do that with like Pokemon games and anything. And you're, you, you guys, like, I know we all love that shit. Like, like I told you, I do that stuff. shit. I do that shit with like uh, the Persona games. Actually, like I don't fucking. I make sure to like be at least ten levels ahead from the whatever boss I have to beat before. I, I like to do that shit mostly because I want to have like okay, I'm gonna spend the rest of the month just ranking up ah, social links, trying to get that shit to the max, getting the best weapons, getting all the money, getting shit to like just do all the work first, just to enjoy the rest of the month. And then as soon as they open another fucking room, like I remember breaking Persona 5 in so in such a way that I got level 99 when all the enemies were level 50 or 54. Because this is what you do. You go to fucking uh, Mementos. You go to one of the rooms that had like only red enemies. You fuck them all all the time. You try to like get away to like kill them in one hit or, or a, like just one turn. As soon as that show up, you go to the door with the fucking uh, cat car and as soon as you're right there in the door, you get out because that resets death. The de death goes away to the yep. other side of the map yep. and you can just go back again and kill reds until you fucking go insane. And I did that <laughs> twice. I, I, and Muda's played these games. I did the same thing, but in the uh, Digimon Cyber Sleuth games mm -hmm. where all, all you had to do, you can set it up before the end of chapter two, really. Mm -hmm. You can end up, uh, you just get... Uh, Two Platinum Sukumons, whatever Digimons you want to train up, get into your party. Obviously, you have memory limits, but that's fine. And then you get, uh, I think it's called USB devices, which you have to farm from your, uh, from the uh, farm mini game in the in the game. Yeah. And by doing that, uh, by doing that, you can essentially uh, get like thirty to forty or like thirty thousand XP from early game bosses because of all because of all the stacking uh percentages that come from it like it's just absolutely insane and i do i do appreciate it when games give you that option i think that's, to really yeah, break things i think that's what makes like an open world game fun like one of my problems with open world games is when they have side content that doesn't actually mean much all the side content we listed so for persona yakuza or digimon it all feeds into making you stronger and better, right? Like, right. I wouldn't do the Animal Crossing minigame if it wasn't going to get me a quarter million dollars so that I could then spend on exactly. the Digimon, you know? All of that stuff is tangible rewards. Like, I don't do that for the trophy or whatever. I do that for the, for the fucking, for not, not even for the completionist. I do that because it makes my character stronger and I feel like what I did actually matters in the game, right? Like, exactly, yeah. You, you want to feel like you're putting on work or something with every every aspect of the game. Yeah. Like, I it's love helping Batman. you towards that goal. I love Batman Arkham Knight. You ain't ever going to fucking catch me ever goddamn doing the Riddler <laughs> trophy. Like, fuck that shit. 
<laughs> yeah. God damn. Yeah, fuck that shit. And this comes from a guy who's like completed every single one of those fucking challenges. I do agree. It, there's a diff but there's a difference between a side content that allows you to uh progress and side content that's purely there for either collectathons or yeah, exactly. you know that's, achievements yeah, that's why like you know the like assassin's creed the new shit i only do the main storyline and say fuck to the side stuff because the side stuff literally gives <laughs> what, what is it like an extra skill point back in the days of assassin's creed brotherhood you built up an actual group you uncovered new pieces of storyline you got new items weapons that fucking there was one item in assassin's creed 3 that made me collect all the items because it literally made you bulletproof <laughs> and like of course i built up my homestead dude that meant i had more money in my pocket and i could buy all the cool shit and like it's stuff like that that i wish more games did but you know we're at a point where it's just i feel like everything is like it's just a lot sanitized of well, not saying it's like a lot of content but like all that content really doesn't mean much it's like I don't give a shit about collecting or climbing 10 towers and I don't give a shit about like finding all the Riddler trophies because like it's not like yeah. the Riddler trophies give me a new weapon or like give me something cool like they just exactly give me... it's gonna gonna give you like cool shit and by the time you like even complete that shit the game's already over you do that shit in post game man mm -hmm. I mean yeah realistically I don't give a shit if your game is 40 hours long if only 10 hours of it is main story then that's what it is. It's a 10 hour game. Well, it's it's one, not a 40 hour it's one game. Of the reasons why like even for horizon and I like horizon, but dude, it took me a year plus to beat the new one because like the storyline I wanted to do. And then it just like, it's one of those games where like the main <clears throat> mission, like it jumps up five levels. So then you have to do this fucking side. Oh, shit yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't yep. care. I just want to do the main story. I don't give a fuck about the side. The side content literally exists just to level me up more. It's just padding. It doesn't actually give me anything worthwhile, at least. I exactly, and that, that's that. that's just how to artificially like add to the duration of a game, and that's not, not a fucking fun way to do it. To yeah. be fair, that is actually one of my biggest issues I had with the uh, new God of War franchise. Uh, God of War, the mm -hmm. original one that came out uh, like four years ago, mm -hmm. and then I haven't played Ragnarok yet. I've heard it has the same issue. I'm so, where essentially you're forced to do side stuff I am in so order tired. to keep up. I am so tired of like seeing weapon like blue weapons, purple weapons, orange weapons. I'm right. so fucking tired of seeing the fucking like, uh, the collect shit. the the looters. Yeah, I, and that's know, like in a lot of games. Now. I liked back in the old days where it's like even for Assassin's Creed 2, it's like you know you bought like you genuinely felt like a progression of your character. Like when you made the money, you bought the better gear. It was more immersive. Like, now it's like, you're right. It's like you're yeah. going out there. Every time, like, people look at a new weapon, it's like, oh, is it the rare? Is it the fucking it's legendary? The rare, right. And it's nothing like... Nothing kills... Yeah. Nothing kills my excitement for a game more than seeing that shit, and when you hit an enemy, you see a fucking number. I... Uh, yeah. oh, that that just fucking kills me, dude. I, I will say... I will say... Looters were exciting back when Borderlands was the only one doing it. Because no, it was, it was, it was at, the, the, only one doing at the time it was innovative. Was Borderlands did like 18 billion different types of fucking weapons. Yeah, that's yes. the thing. You could it never find the same weapon twice. Yeah. But that's the thing. That's the thing is that it this this whole obsession with looter type gameplay, whether it be this, Diablo, whether it be Borderlands, whether it be any other type of game that has this mechanic. Mm hmm. It was really exciting when Borderlands 1 came out and it was the only game doing it and they did it well and you were right. You would never find the same weapon twice. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And now every single game out there and Destiny is the biggest offender of this of just Destiny, power scaling mm -hmm. and nothing <laughs> Trying to buy seems that game special. is a fucking problem itself. Man. Trying to figure out how to navigate the purchase screen. And we play that shit for like a good solid week, I think, entirely. But yeah. then, ugh. Uh, that's the thing, though, is that back when Borderlands did it, when they first introduced it, that was a really exciting gameplay idea. Yeah. At this point, everybody is doing it. It's not fun anymore. Let's fucking move on from it and let's come up with a new gameplay mechanic that is equally as exciting. Amen. Oh, well, we have been going for 
almost an hour and a half. I think that is a good place for us to stop here tonight. I want to thank anybody who is watching for watching. This is episode one. Hopefully by the next episode, Imaru himself should have a webcam. Already order one. (laughs) You'll see his beautiful face. But that being said, my name is Extreme Elixir. You can check me out over at twitch.tv slash Extreme Elixir. Imaru? Uh, you can find me on Twitter, on Instagram, Blue Sky, Tumblr, Twitch, Kofi, whatever, at the Novica. If you want to see some um, Sonic artwork, that's what I'm working on right now. You can check me out there. Yeah, you can check me out at Some Ordinary Gamers YouTube and at Ordinary Gamers on Twitter. And yeah. Also, yeah. by the way, uh, Imaru, Twitter doesn't mm-hmm. exist anymore. <laughs>